Hello, hello. Meh. I had a few... What is it? I don't know what I was about to say, but basically I remembered that this game, that cheap and sacred thing, this was another visual novel besides Yojimbo that pretty much got me into the visual novel scene. Even though this one is a kinetic novel, it's pretty much had a big impact on just why I wanted to create a game, why I wanted to support game creators, and even just to delve into the world of reading a story game. And what was it? This came out from the creator Caro Scene, and they published this from Lemma Soft Forms freaking back in 2011. <laughs> it's only an hour long. It is 16 plus because of the violence, sexuality, and brief language. And sadly, the image is not there anymore, but you'll see it in a moment. But the synopsis is essentially an AI story. Only one person has ever told Autumn Godfrey, I love you. And that person wasn't even human. But Autumn's android playmate and babysitter Ellie mysteriously... Autumn hasn't seen Ellie since Autumn was seven, but now, with the help of Jude, a android prostitute with attitude, she just might find out what happened all those years ago. And, as it says, Kerosene was a director and writing. There was line art by Lennox, backgrounds by Ashley Coulter, CG coloring, Verity, sprite coloring, Morhegan, and Sen, Senna, Shade Light, and Kevin MacLeod, which Kevin has quite a bit of music on this site being used, which is a good thing for their production. Uh, extra sprite editing, Wolf Zazu, Zazu, and Melora V, and there was some beta testing by Tail Weaver, Red Cat, Morth Morthium, and Laura S. And of course, the engine was by Pi Tom, which clearly that's the biggest thing on this site. What was it? Yeah, I think this was like their main masterpiece that they made. So what was it? This, yeah, 2011, and pretty much anyone else who ever was on this site was pretty impressed with the story. Oh yeah, that's another game I should look at, the Circumnavigate. Sir oh well, I don't know if it ever came out. But essentially, if you want to play the game, it's here on Lemma Soft Forms. And let's begin in the game! Beepity boops and da 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 ba da 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 do ba da 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 Now you can see the production, the final masterpiece of the image. Pretty much white space. Two people, Autumn and Jude. Though you can see Jude's eyes are significantly blue, which will play into the story in just a bit. So let us begin. That cheap and sacred thing. The house is dead silent as the camera pans in. Then, suddenly, the front door busts open. Behind it surge three cheering, pretty children with neatly combed hair, straight teeth, and an unrealistic wardrobe budget. A man trails behind them, comedically unable to maintain control. He's like, get back here, children. Blah. The camera pans through the window, where a woman looks on dotingly with an infant in each arm. That's a lot of arm strength. Finally, the camera pans down, revealing a baby bump. 
It was the epilogue to a B-movie chick flick. Cheryl doesn't care how late I go to bed, as long as I'm quiet in my room. So, I was surfing the internet at midnight and saw the movie was streaming, free and legal. Oh, what a good girl, always getting, not being a pirate. So I was like, what the heck? It might be cute. Yeah. It had a beautiful cast, but they weren't very talented. The writing needed quite a bit of help, too. I think it was trying to be a modern update of the Taming of the Shrew, only they couldn't decide between a sexist or a feminist interpretation of the play. The focus of the movie quickly left the power struggle between the genders when they ran out of a questionable jokes and moved into a mundane love fest. The point of the final scene was, this is how much they love each other, six kids worth. And I thought, very pessimistically, I realize, isn't that what this is all about? Love is such a great thing that you can make a mildly successful B-movie with it without any quality production. And... but all it is, really. A robotic desire that ensures that our species has sex and six kids. We're hard drive... hard... hard drive? Whoa. <laughs> Hardwired to keep our species alive. Like a robot is hardwired to calculate your long division store your files, or clean up after you. Or act in movies. Andres could have acted more convincingly than that cast. Autumn. What? There's a bag for you. Miss Godfrey left it. Like, a gift bag? Cheryl remembered my birthday? Wow, really? Yes. Please bring it to me. Yes. Yeah, I know some of the transitions to the game are gonna look a little funky, but bear with it. This game was made a while ago, so some things may be a little glitchy. And again, the code's not perfect. It is what it is. Cheryl turned Mary's personality off the moment we got her. By personality, I mean the program that makes a robot act like a human. So now, Mary speaks in a monotone and does never does anything unnecessary. More human-like. Cheryl turned that off because... of what happened to Ellie. Ellie had a personality error when she was committed to me. You see, when a robot is committed to someone, that's the person they pay special attention to. Usually, it's a person they try to stimulate a human relation with. But because of the error Ellie had, Cheryl made a rule that robots aren't allowed to be committed to me. The only exception is Mary, but her personality is always turned off. She's a pretty good make. She's lasted us a very long time. It's partly because I don't even really use her. Cheryl downloaded some My Servant software on her, and that's all she does. I'm supposed to take her with me when I go out, but I never do. I feel naked the first time I went outside without one. I took Ellie with me everywhere. Like I was immature and paranoid or something. You see, 
my pals are part babysitter, part children's toy, part safety feature. When a parent has to leave their kid alone, they'll leave it with their my pal. The robot can make sure the kid doesn't, say, stick their finger in a socket or put their hand in the stove. Some wild ass shit like that, some kid freaking try and be like, I'm gonna die. No. And their artificial intelligence allows them to play most kid games. They also stay with the kid if they have to be out in public by themselves. Like if the kid has to walk home from school or something. They can access GPS to ki keep the kid from getting lost. They protect them too. My pals are androids that look like any other kid, so it creates the illusion that the kid isn't alone. Not only that, they're also capable of protecting the child from would-be assailants, and using force if necessary. When the kids are at school or something, the robots are usually turned off by someone on their internal trusted adults list and put in a special storage facility. It's not polite to have my pal out when you're talking with people you know well, say, at school or something. After all, my pals are designed to look and act like a human. Frankly, it's deceptive. But I never let anyone put Ellie away. She was always with me. Always. backed up her hard drive on a mini disc. I kept it hidden from Cheryl. Mary found it once when she was cleaning my room, but I told her to forget it was there, and she hasn't touched it since. I would be in deep trouble if she told Cheryl about it. Maybe today, I'll take it with me. It's my birthday after all. Our best friend anniversary. Autumn, here is the bag. Thank you. Mary, this isn't a present. See? It's just a pharmacy bag. Yes. But you said it was. No. Replay. There is a bag for you. Miss Godfrey left it. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I opened it up. It's some kind of pills. Oh. Birth control. <laughs> oh, man. I had to cough a moment, so sorry, I disappeared. Oh my god. Mary, she got me birth control. I see. I don't even have a boyfriend. I think she's projecting, you know? I learned from her mistake. I mean... I am her mistake. I had to learn. You know, I understand your perspective. Do you really, Mary? Yes. What do you think I'm saying? You do not have relationships because you fear children. Um, that's not what I meant. Just because I'm not in a relationship doesn't mean I'll avoid one. But if I were in one, I'd be careful. You know? No. That was quick. No. 
No, I don't know. What don't you know? I don't know what you're trying to say. Why? You feel children. Birth control prevents children. You should happy to have it. That's because you're making assumptions about... I mean... I don't know what I mean. I'm not happy to have it, okay? Okay. Why am I even talking to you? I don't know. Neither do I. I'm going out. Throw this away. Yes. Zoe, Rick? Oh, hey, Autumn. What's up? We were just talking about you. Good things, undoubtedly. You can tell yourself that if you want to. <laughs> Secret birthday stuff? Right. So, where's Nadia? She's running an errand. She'll be here any minute now. So, new topic? So, this morning on the news. Why do you even watch the news? Yeah, that's right. It's so depressing. Hi, everyone! Hi, Nadia. Nadia! Hey! I got the... Shh! Don't spoil it! What? Do I hear birthday secrets? I was just saying that on the news, this guy attacked an armor bot. Nice diversion. Ah, oh, well, I'll let them get away with it. So? Yeah, another day, another robot gets attacked. So what? Okay, well, she screamed like they were supposed to and tried to escape. Luckily for the robot and the company, they were in a hotel and some employees came and stopped the guy from hurting her too much. But he did tear her arm off, so the company sued for damages. Well, duh, they're after his money, but that's not a big deal. They can reattach an arm. At least he didn't smash her face or her hard drive or anything. I thought it was weird because the company was using the news to promote a more durable armor bot they're coming out with. I'm trying to market it to Sadus or something? That's gross. Rick, why'd you even bring that stuff up? It's just what came to mind. What's wrong with your mind? Wait, wait, wait back up. Which ones are the armor bots? And are they the sex robots? Yeah, it's the umbrella name for the short-term sex androids. Short-term? Yeah, the long-term ones that live with you are eternal lovers. Armor bots are the rental type. Oh shit, I've been saying armor and not amor. <laughs> oh no. I can't read. Okay, just ignore it, but the past few lines that said armor, I meant a more. My bad. I just realized armor has a U in it and dingus me. Okay, seriously, why does that keep popping up? Shut up thing. You mean the prostitute type? You don't have to judge. But that's what it is, right? Uh... Why do people attack robots anyway? Seems like you're always hearing about someone breaking them intentionally. I don't think people attack ro- all- attack all robots. 
Only the androids. Especially the committed ones. Like Amor bots. Eternal lovers. My pals. My servants. Guard bodies. Right. I kind of get why they would break those. Really? Why? Robot commitment is annoying, you know. They're programmed to always love you or whatever. No matter what. It kind of pisses you off. It's like, you gotta test it somehow. It's like, will you still love me if you do this? You know? Not really. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Lily, I thought you just said sadists were gross. Yeah, what's wrong with your mind? There's nothing wrong with smacking a robot a little. Taking a step away. Rick, I wouldn't hit a human. That's totally different. Not to mention totally wrong. Besides, a human would be pissed. My pal can't reject you. Or at least it always forgives you. That's what's annoying. Its feelings are so fake. Zoe, you don't beat your or my pal, do you? She didn't make that clear already. Yeah, when I was little, actually. I went through five in one year. What, what year? My 11th, I think. Puberty. Sounds like it. Autumn is still on her second. You're kidding. Wait, you do mean your second this year, right? Second in my life. That's weirder than Zoe's abusive streak. You never had one malfunction? Or want to upgrade your model? Not really. Well, I leave my current one at home. So, there's no point. But what if you get in trouble? Right. Women who are alone are even more vulnerable now because they obviously don't have my pals or guard bodies. It's not like I'm going there anywhere alone. I'm always either with you guys or I'm at home. So it doesn't matter much, too much. You probably shouldn't tell people you don't bring your my pal with you. Ah, who cares? Rick clearly does. What? What are you gonna do without a bit of knowledge? Hey, don't look at me. You're the abusive one. Not to people. Anyways, Nadia, thanks again for having my party at your house. Of course. My mom loves having parties. And your house is huge. Can I have my birthday party here too? Well, sure. But there's nothing wrong with your family. I live in a trailer. <laughs> Is that wrong enough for you? Uh, that's not nothing wrong with your family, Autumn. Oh no, there there is. I'm not offended at all. What? Rank, you've clearly never met Cheryl, so you wouldn't know. She's psycho. She's nuts. And a jerk. All she does is bitch in between working. Thankfully, she works too much. But if she ever did come home, I, when I had friends over, she would totally freak out. Yeah, I made the mistake of being over there once. Me too. 
I'm the one paying for this house and your ass. You can have people over when you get your own damn place. Are you kidding me? I had to go in for extra therapy sessions after that. Yeah, I guess she thinks of me like a tenant. Cheryl, your sister? No, she gave birth to me. Shall we set up before people start showing up? Yeah. Hurry, we got a late start. People are gonna start showing them in five minutes. Oh, here are some now. Ah, heck with it. Let's set up as we go along. <laughs> right. Whenever, whenever everyone's around me is having fun. I'm happy. But sometimes... I get this hollow feeling inside. Like, something's wrong. Something's missing. Ellie. Even though she's been gone for... 10 years now. I really miss her. Ellie! What is it? Close your eyes. Okay. Hey, you're following me. I always follow you. How can you tell where you're going? You see, I don't see with my eyes like you do. I have cameras that are on. Then turn your cameras off. But I'm not allowed to. Just for a moment, okay? But what if you do something that you're not allowed to? What if you get hurt? I have to keep you safe. Silly, it will take me two seconds. What will? I'm going to leave the room, and then I'll come back, and then I'll tell you when you can look again. But you might get hurt without me. I won't. Trust me. Two seconds. Okay, I'll override my cameras. Your eyes are open. It's okay. My cameras are off. Close your eyes, too. Okay. May I turn them on now that it's been two seconds? No. Stay there. I'll be right back. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. Open your eyes. And turn on my cameras? Yeah. A present? It's for you. For me? Yeah. Today is your birthday. You don't give people gifts on your own birthday. It's your birthday, too. I don't have a birthday. Yes, you do. Today is your birthday. But I'm not born. Yes, you were. You were born the day we turned you off. Which was my first birthday. I don't think so. I'm not human. So? Animals have birthdays. But animals are alive. I'm just a computer. Computers don't have birthdays. Well, could be an anniversary. An anniversary? Yeah, it'll be our best friend anniversary. Like married people, do you have anniversaries when they give each other gifts? I know, because I saw it on TV. A lady got mad because her husband couldn't remember what day it was, so he didn't give her a birth or present. Remember? You had to explain it to me. I remember. But instead, our anniversary of being married will be our best friend anniversary. So today is your birthday 
and our best friend anniversary. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so very much for the present. You're welcome. But I didn't get you an anniversary present. You don't have any money, silly. I know, but I still feel bad. Open it, open it. Okay. Oh, a monster truck? Like in the book you always checked out from the library. Oh, that's so cool. And it's red, too. My favorite color. Yeah, I made sure to get a red one. Thank you, Autumn. I love you. I love you, too. Hey, Ellie. Yeah? You know that movie I got for my birthday? The one you were watching just now? Yeah. Yeah, was it a good movie? Yeah. It was just really old, though. Oh? It was about a man who made a puppet, and the puppet called the man father. The puppet was alive? Sort of. But he wasn't a human. He wanted to be a real boy for his father. What happened in the end? After he did good things, the blue fairy turned him into a real boy. Sounds like a happy ending. Yeah. But it made me think. Ellie, do you ever really want to be a real girl? No, I don't. You don't? Why not? Because then I would have my own parents and my own house and my own my pal and I would have to go to school and... Isn't that good? If you were alive, you could do whatever you wanted. You wouldn't have to look after me all the time. But then another robot would be your my pal, right? Well, yeah. I'd never get to see you. We would go to school together. But that's only seven hours of the day. I don't want to be human because then I wouldn't get to be with you all the time. I love you, Autumn. As long as I can be with you, I'm happy. Really? Yep. Ellie. What I do to talk to you one more time? Bye! Thanks for coming. <laughs> I'm kinda tired. I'm glad it's winding down. Hey, Nadia. Did Zoe go into the other room? I think so. I think Rick's there with her, too. Oh, alright. Well, I guess I'll just clean up a bit. Oh, you don't have to. It's your birthday after all. Oh, thanks. Ooh, the second half of the plot is about to come in. We're gonna pause here for the game because I've got to depart for work. But this will be interesting proceeding with the rest of the story. Let us save here and go back to the main menu. But this way you get just a taste of that cheap and sacred thing. Because the main plot is about to begin with all the drama, the heartfelt heartbreak, the reminiscing, the memories, the childhood, the questions of AI, which I'll be playing the second half tonight, but this way 
if you want, you can look at the little, what is it, VOD, and see the first half. Or you can pick up the game and play it yourself, because it's free. Ooh. Ah. That was a stupid-ass sound, but oh well. Thanks for staying. Thanks for watching. We will do this. What is it? So it's three-something. So in five? Five or four hours. I'll be back. Goodbye, boss. And I should probably quit that. And go to... Do, 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 do. Here. Excellent. So, goodbye. Have a fun time with your day. I'm gonna go do some work. Yeah.